This is crazy. We're back. We haven't been at this property in two and a half years. We are at Richmond Heights. This was one of the first projects we did in our original multifamily fund. And we've been out here many times, you and I, in the freezing cold in January. Is this your first time seeing it? First time. Before we go back to the story, you haven't seen the size of this thing. You have just saw it on paper and the numbers. It's freaking huge, it's right? It's massive. It's massive. I mean, 72 acres is freaking huge. It's unbelievable. For people that follow us, I know you guys remember this property. For everyone who's new, we originally, actually, this storage unit right here was a Sears that went vacant. One of our partners on our storage business brought this to us, I can't even remember when, 18? Something like that, 2018? It was late 17, early 18. And we didn't have the capital for it. We were fully allocated. It, really because we were starting to work on our multifamily stuff. And then, I don't know, a year later, they bring the JC Pennies that went out of business. And they're like, hey guys, I think we have a multifamily project for you. So we ended up purchasing the Sears for like one seven. And I think the original idea was to build about 350 units. Yeah, it was supposed to be, it was this Sears building, all the parking that comes with it and we were gonna convert it into 375 units. I wanna say we closed on that early 2020. Right, the, the JC Pennies, not Sears. Yes, this is the Sears. Correct. We started on that one, and then we filmed all the original videos of like rolling out our first, what it was multifamily fun called back then, VA1. Yeah. Value add one. I remember the video, we were walking through the mall and the security guard threw you guys out. Yep, yep, dude, that is crazy. So basically, we were gonna start with this project, and then a year later, the owner of the entire mall, it started to become distressed. Like when we walked through it, it felt kind of ghost land. It was probably what, 20% occupied? It was in bad shape. I mean, listen, a lot of these big retail malls, like they kind of just started to fizzle away and you had this incredible community, what, three miles down the road in Beachwood yeah. that had uh, like the malls with like the retail experience and the high-end stores and the restaurants that popped up and it just, it distressed this one even more. What that meant is we had the opportunity to buy the mall. So then we ended up purchasing on the mall. We purchased them on 21 for seven, eight, I believe. Yeah, it was mid 2021, it was seven, eight. And so basically that put us at just under $10 million for all 72 acres, which was a great buy. And then what did it go from? We were originally gonna build around 350. <laughs> then what it, was the new ad? It became a monster. So it became, it went from 375 units to 815, but it also had like an entire retail component. There is a massive grocery store that's actually already under construction now that we're here that was going to be a part of it a movie theater a bunch of restaurants a lot of shopping and so it wasn't just going to be a, a residential property it was going to basically be a full-blown work play live community right back then i originally thought the big opportunity was vacant malls or distressed malls throughout america scraping them and building right multifamily, which that might still be the opportunity we ended up going in a different direction, but before we talk about that, what went into this? Because it wasn't just entitlements. There were bonds and some yeah. tax abatements. Talk yeah. about that. So one of the good things is that a project of this size, you get the city involved at a very deep level, right? Because for them, there's a lot of value to do a development of this size and this scope in a community that needs housing. And so when we came here, we basically looked at it and said, look, if we're gonna bring all this capital and basically revitalize this massive piece of property that sits in the center of your city, we need you to help us out. And so that included things like a property tax abatement, which basically means we were only gonna have to pay property tax on the purchase amount, not on the value of all the improvements and so we were gonna have that locked in for 15 or so years. Then we also went to them and said, we're gonna need some capital for the project as well. That comes through basically a bond. It was called a TIF bond, a tax incremental financing bond. And we locked in the bond. I wanna say it was about 50 or $60 million. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. We locked in the bond, we locked in the property taxes as we were completing permitting and entitlement and kind of going through that cycle. And so we ran through that whole process, which took us a couple of years. And then by the time we got to the point where we were like, okay, like this thing is ready to start going out, sourcing financing and get us through like what was phase one of the build. We still had to raise equity. We still had to raise capital for it. Right. We were going to then start to raise the actual capital needed to lock in the financing to start phase one of the construction. Uh, we looked at it and said, you know, we already built a massive amount of value on this site. Let's put some feelers out there and see if somebody would want to 
purchase it from us with what we already created without actually having to go through the construction process. But that that Wait, decision on, but that decision came in two in two ways. One, we were at that juncture, and two, there was something else going on. We realized in our own backyard there is a massive opportunity that we hadn't seen until that point. Okay, so all the Midwest and Sunbelt investors that give us crap for investing in California, look, we were we we're here with you guys. We we're investing in Ohio. We do have properties here, but on the multifamily side, we started looking at our state and seeing how outrageous the housing crisis was becoming. We actually put all of our attention towards California. We don't own any multifamily now outside of the state and all of our new projects are out there as well. So we kind of, I think pivoted and, and at least for me, really, I stopped looking at this as the greatest opportunity and started really wanting to go into the undersupplied cities that are difficult to build and putting new housing online. So when we started looking at an opportunity to exit, did we find it? Yeah, so we were able to find uh, a party that wanted to take over our position in the project. And so we were about four, and, four, four and a half million dollars in. We're 4.5. At, at that juncture, and we exited for just under eight, if I'm not mistaken. Seven, seven. Yeah. Now I'm the numbers guy. Boom. Scary. <laughs> so we had just exited for just under eight. And so basically what it ended up being was it ended up being this gain that we had putting in two years of work, but not actually having to go through the construction. Now I will say this, our partners on this project are awesome. Yep. And they're still in on this. Yep. And I actually think this is going to be an incredible, incredible design and a build when this thing is all said and done. For us, we just looked at it and said, we like the California market driven heavily on the shortage of the supply and the massive amount of demand you have to live in that state. And it's always better to build in your backyard when you don't have to fly for four hours to get to your okay. property. A hundred percent. So here's my question to everyone watching this. One, <clears throat> we are 4.5 in, sold it for 7.7, made a $3.2 million gain in about three years, yeah. right? Was that the move to do? Would you have done that and take the gain or would you continue forward to build out? That's the first question. And number two, would you guys still be investing in states throughout the Midwest or do you think we're doing the right thing by investing in California? Because I'm telling you, I, I hear it. People think we're nuts for it. I think it's the greatest opportunity. What do you guys think?